Today we're going to be talking about an app that we found very useful on the farm. This is actually something that's part of Google Maps. It's called Google My Maps. And what you're looking at here is the main screen. To get to Google My Maps, it's really pretty easy. If you've already got a Google account, when you sign in, you can go to Google Maps and then type in your URL or your, your uh, menu bar at the top, Google My Maps, and you'll go directly to that part of the Google Maps application. Now what this is set up to do is, this is set up originally to save basically places that you may have mapped before using Google Maps for road directions or things of that nature. But you can actually create your own specified maps uh, and you can put overlays onto them and define them any, basically any way you want to. Now why we've done this and use this is because it's really been a helpful way for us to look at the farm from a satellite view and to map out where our various growing areas are, how big they are. This would include hoop houses and structures and things of that nature. So it's been really useful to just kind of sit there and visually kind of get an idea of what these things look like. Now, Google Maps, when you're creating your own specialized map, uses the GPS coordinates of wherever it is that you're mapping. And so you're able to create uh, these overlays using some very highly accurate uh, GPS coordinates. So when the map says that it's so many feet by so many feet, and it's really pretty accurate within about a foot or so of what's actually on the ground itself. Now, the question is, why would we use something like this? Well, we use it for planning purposes. Um, it also helps us to kind of keep track of the changes that are going on in our place, enables us to kind of keep a more permanent record that in some cases it's actually been quite useful for the USDA surveys that come out every year when they're asking, you know, how many growing acres do you have of this or, or, you know, how many square feet do you have under structures for plastic tunnels or things of that nature. So it's actually been pretty useful for that. You can also share these maps with other people. So like if you're collaborating on doing something or maybe you needed to, um, you know, put in an application for a high tunnel or something like that. And, and the NRCS wanted you to, uh, they wanted to get a, an idea of where you're going to put things or, you know, what your property's like. It's very useful to share that information with different people. So again, it's really accurate. And so that's kind of why we're using it and we're keeping it um, on our Google Drive so we can access it anytime. We can also access it from our Android phone because it also has the ability to um, use Google Maps. So let's go into the basics of how to create it. We're not going to go into, you know, the really super programming part of it, but <clears throat> give you just a basic idea of how it works. And what you're looking at here is the main uh, menu when you go into Google Maps. And we have uh, an untitled map here that has nothing in it. It's basically the world. And so this is kind of like starting point of a blank canvas, so to speak. So let's click on that and go into it. Takes a second to load. Okay. Now, one of the things to note here is Google Maps is going to default to what they call terrain view. This is a satellite view, but it's basically terrain view and it's um, from many, many miles up. And what we're going to do is you can decide what kind of base map you have underneath it. Uh, from a basic map that uh, looks like a road map uh, to the terrain type that you're viewing here. Uh, and to a satellite view, which gets it down to really the particulars. Now, since our area is so small relative to, you know, the world, so to speak, uh, using a terrain map doesn't really work very well on a very small area. So we we uh, use a satellite map because it shows a lot more detail. So we're going to switch to the satellite. And then let's just do an example. And what we're going to do is we're going to use Bouchard Gardens up in Canada just to kind of see what it looks like. So we'll type in Bouchard. 
remove the spell here. And it should come up right there, Bouchard Gardens. And it's going to zoom right in on that in the satellite view. Now, you can make out a lot of detail here. You can zoom in to get as close as you want. And as you can see, you can see that the detail is even getting better. You can see uh, buses and you can see the actual, uh, some of the tillage they've done in the place. And uh, zooming out a little bit, you can zoom it to, you know, whatever level makes sense to you. Now, one of the things that this allows you to do is you can create this map, you can title it, uh, you could share it, you could preview the finished map when it's done, and you can create what they call layers. So the base map satellite image doesn't change. Um, some of the more permanent fixtures like roads and things like that that are actually in the satellite view itself are always permanently on your map. But you have the ability now to define different areas within and save them as defined areas. And you can create what are called layers. So as an example, if you looked at this and you said, well, there's two distinct growing areas right here, you can create an outline around this growing area, determine how many uh, acres or, or ultimately square feet you can convert it into. And this can be a saved layer under a category or it's actually a saved item under a layer that's a category of your map. So as an example, you could say tilled areas and include this. So let's do as an example. The menu bar up here has some very simple things on it. A redo and an undo button. Uh, a select, which is the basic one. You see the little hand on the screen allows you to grab things and move the image around. Uh, actually pinpointing something, adding a marker on something. So as an example, if you decided to say, okay, if I click the marker thing, I'm going to put a marker here. And it's a point of interest. You can label it. You can put a description on it. Or even if you had a photo, you can put a photo on it. In this case, we're going to change back to select. And if you wanted to get rid of this point, you hit the delete feature and it's gone. So the little hand is back and we're back to select. The next is drawing a line. This is how you actually outline an irregular area. So if you click on this, you want to add a line or a shape, or if you're adding a route or things of that nature, you could do that. But let's go to add a line or a shape. Now you can see that the mouse pointer turned to an actual plus. Okay, so every time you left click the mouse you're going to make a dot and then you can draw along make another dot and you can see you can make you know pretty good line outline of the area you're working on so if we're doing this and we want to see what this means you can just keep going along uh, the outline of it it's very simple And then the last point connects it together in a what's called a polygon. This is where you give it a name. You type it in and say garden. And you can put a title in there. Blah. Blah. You can put any description you want in there. Then when you save that in the map, it automatically creates what, how many feet is it around the entire area and how many acres are in the actual um, polygon area. So as you can see this is a little over a third of an acre which is you know if I guess you convert it to square footage there's 43,560 square feet in an acre so you know you're roughly somewhere in the neighborhood of 15,000 uh, let's say 17,000 square feet in this. So this can give you a lot of good information. Now the next thing you can do is add directions. So how to get to it if you needed to. Um, that's not really super necessary, uh, but if you're making a map to how to get to something, it's a good idea. The next is a ruler. Now this is an interesting thing because now you can start measuring some distances like how far away something is or what's the distance between two things. 
So if you click on the ruler, it's going to give you the plus thing again. And you can say, hmm, how far away is this garden spot? We'll start here from this bus. So as you can see, it's 105 feet away if you walk from that bus to the garden place. So this is very useful in terms of measuring like, well, how long is a bed or how long is, is uh, you know, your hoop house or how wide is something. It's got some really good information. It's a temporary thing. It's not permanent on the actual map. So when you go up and you click the ruler again, it goes away, but you're still in <clears throat> ruler mode. So when you click again, uh, you can get the distance, like what's the distance between this car and this bus? It's about 183 feet. <clears throat> this is very accurate. So we'll click again to get rid of it. And if you go back to select mode, remember, if you want to get out of one of these functions, like making a polygon or measuring a distance or putting a marker, you always go back to select mode. So that's the basics on how to get around. Now let's go back and take a look at the map of our actual farm itself. This is Bear Mountain Farm. What we did is we went through and we um, created the areas, outlined the areas of the different places on our farm and what, where they are and what they do. And there's a lot of good information that's able to be stored about each thing. Let's just take as an example this growing area here we call Area H. When we open it, <clears throat> we get the description, and you can see it includes 16 100 foot by 2.5 foot wide rows that are 4 foot on center. 4,000 square feet of growing space. The whole area is about 0.175 acres, which is roughly not even a quarter acre. Now, what if we wanted to say, <clears throat> well, how wide is area H? We could go up to the ruler click on the ruler to measure distance, move the cursor to the edge, click once with the left button on the mouse, and then move over and we can see that it is approximately 70 foot wide. So, we just click off on that. You could say, well, how long is your hoop de doo too, which is a hoop house? Well, let's take a look at that. So we hit the measuring stick again. We go to the edge, and we can pretty much, okay, I can measure it again. As you can see, it's, it's moving along, and it's approximately 100 feet. So it's a 100-foot hoop house. Let's go back to select. Now, the nice thing about this, again, this is a permanent record, and it's also a useful record in sharing. Um, you can put a lot of different information uh, into the actual description itself. We have things segregated up, the basic farm boundary around our place. The upper farm boundary is our farm area where we're growing the flower crops. The rangeland is pasture slash hayland, which is the rest of our property. So if we zoom out, we can get a great idea of what the actual property looks like. Total outline of the property is all the way around here. This part is rangeland, hayland. These are our neighbors. <clears throat> and this is the basic growing area. And these are the polygons or the specific sub areas under a particular uh, category. So we've added layers where we have the farm boundary, which is the outside, and then we have field areas. And under the field areas are the various different growing sub areas, such as area A, as an example. When we highlight that and click on it on the legend, it comes up and tells you what's in it. We can, as we talked about before, we can edit this when things change. We can add an image or photo or even a video to it if we needed to. And that becomes part of the Google Map records. So this is it, basically. We've segregated it into the field areas, into the hoop house areas, and into our facilities itself. Now, one of the things that you got to be careful with this is when you're setting this up, 
you have to be sure that you kind of have this mapped out where you're going to put your areas under what layers of your map because once you define an area under a layer unfortunately Google Maps does not give you an easy way to modify it the easiest thing to do would be to delete the area and recreate it under the correct area or correct layer uh, when you do that um, there are ways you can use a a editor but you have to know um, the markup language that Google Maps uses to be able to do that effectively so the easiest thing to do is think about how you want to put things into what areas the layers are basically permanent and once you put your polygon area under a layer title it's very difficult to move it around so that's about it when you're done the thing is always being saved so as you make changes it's saved and if you want to preview the map of what it looks like you can hit preview and it will come up with the finished map still working on it and there it is there's the entire map it's actually not in edit mode anymore so you're not changing anything um, this is actually what if you were to share it what it would look like to somebody else well we hope this helps you out and it's a very useful tool and it's free so you can't argue with the price on it if you like what you see be sure to check out some of our other videos on our channel we have almost 60 videos now on various different topics be sure to hit the subscribe button and I um, want to thank you for watching today and have a good day.